Hi everyone. In this video, I will be going from Hang Fa Chin to Shoki Wan by foot. The journey typically takes 59 minutes according to Google Maps. And uh, this shortcut is actually very useful for hikers as well. So let's just have a look at the map itself. The yellow line represents a short walk from the Hang Fa Chin MTR station to the top of Sheng Tai Road. And the red line is the route we will be taking. Hopefully this should save you 30 minutes of walking time. The entire route should take around 15 to 20 minutes. Hope you guys enjoy it. So I'm in Hang Fa Chin. I'm going to walk towards Shao Kei Wan and uh, hopefully I'll show you a nice path, a nice little shortcut. Uh, most people are not really aware of it, but I guess back in the days uh, when this area used to be uh, basically a village area, um, they used to use it quite frequently. So yeah, I'll show you this site. So this is the basic path. As you can see, this is the road. This is the road leading up. It's called Sheng Tai Road. There's a flyover there that leads to the main flyover towards Wan Chai. Yeah, it's quite a sunny day actually. So there is a little narrow path here. You have to be careful. Uh, there's a double white line over there. Um, traffic does come in this direction sometimes, but it's usually from uh, over there. So it's coming from the Chai Wan area. So this is our, this is Heng Fa Chin. You can see on this side, there's a lot of greenery. This is a country park. You can see taxis turning from this side. We're underneath the main flyover right now. So you're probably wondering, oh, is this the route? Nope, that's not the route. I've seen many hikers uh, get confused over here in the past. Uh, I've had to help them <laughs> a little bit. Um, the path is actually over here. So this road goes all the way around and all the way up there. This is the path. It's actually right next to the drain, but there are some small steps. They are frequently cleared out, but there is some overgrowth here. So you have to be a little bit careful about your footing. Uh, it's also wet, uh, maybe slippery as well, okay? So do take your time when walking up here. Again, this is the drain. <laughs> yeah, let's keep going. So you can see there are signs of construction. Okay. Let's go up. Now this path was built quite a long time ago. Uh, there are still signs of uh, abandoned homes along the path to some degree, but over time they have been eroded. But this is a very convenient path that people can take if they want to go to Shoke Wan from Hengfa Chun. There is actually no other way. This is the shortest route. If you want to get to Shoke Wan via another path, you'd have to go from Chai Wan. You'd have to essentially climb the hill, which takes several hours. And then you'd have to go down the hill, which also takes some time. <laughs> so this is actually a very convenient path. You can see the traffic on the road is, caref uh, is, a, is quite heavy, so you have to be a little careful. Uh, this, is, this road also leads to the Museum of Coastal Defense. 
So it's actually a very convenient path. In fact, it's, it may even be easier than going via the Shokewan MTR station. Uh, again, the condition of the road changes according to the level of maintenance. Uh, this road is uh, frequently maintained. Uh, we're here, it's a great example. There's actually a path that allows us to go directly through. You know, go straight on, but obviously you can see the overgrowth. So at some point, uh, some teams will probably be sent to cut down these uh, overgrowths that are branching off. Uh, this is all part of summer. <laughs> you know, the spectac spectacles of summer is that there is a lot of growth during this period. You can see there is a service road that crosses over here. Again, this is part of the country park. And that building over there is the Museum of Coastal Defense. I highly recommend that you visit. It's got a lot of historical value. And uh, it also educates you as to what Hong Kong was, how it came to be, who defended Hong Kong during World War II. It's great, it's actually quite beautiful to be honest. The scenes are very nice as well, they're quite unique. So if you're into like making videos and stuff, you may be able to bring your drones as well because it's quite an open space. So right now we're actually walking on the side lane of the main road. Again, this could be dangerous. Uh, so always uh, try to come with someone, right? Don't uh, try to avoid walking alone, just in case. So we would usually be walking in that area, but you can see there's a lot of fresh growth. I'm actually walking through this fresh growth. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, beautiful flowers, wildflowers. Okay, I can never really tell whether it's a weed or if it's a proper flower. <laughs> if it looks beautiful, I think it's a flower. I think that's probably what most people go by nowadays, right? So you can see a lot of vehicles. My dad and I, we frequent this quite often, this route. It's just very convenient and it's actually, it's quite relaxing as well. Today seems to be a little warm though. You can still see that there are some uh, clouds in the sky. So that's the Museum of Coastal Defense. You can see there is a lift over there and people are walking across the bridge to get to the main building of the museum. But this is basically, that's the lift tower. Also, this path, unfortunately, uh, has some level of uh, litter. Uh, that's because a lot of um, garbage trucks, a lot of uh, construction vehicles also use this road. It is a main road and they don't secure their trash properly. So as a consequence, it flies all over the place. That's actually quite dangerous, especially if you consider that there may be vehicles behind them. And of course, if it covers their windshield, it can get very messy, okay? So now we're approaching a little bit of shade. You can see the shade offered by the trees. You know, it's critical. That's why it's so important to foster green environments, to incorporate greenery into the urban setting. So again, that's some that's the Museum of Coastal Defense, the Hong Kong Museum of Coastal Defense. Uh, there's a lot of uh, slope maintenance work going on. Oh, big bus. <laughs> oh, another one. Oh, look at these bamboos, bamboo trees. Technically, bamboo isn't a tree, it's a type of grass. It's used extensively in construction projects in Hong Kong. It's got real high strength and it's relatively cheap. Look at these leaves. Look at the size of my hand compared to the leaf. 
quite massive. Yeah. So I'm approaching Shokei One uh, after this turn. Let's have a let's have a look. I never really knew what this building was. I guess it's some sort of fishing, uh, fishery, uh, fishery building, because uh, Shokei One area is near the sea, and there's a fishing uh, wholesale market right over there. Again, we're approaching the village areas. This is the Museum of Coastal Defense. You should be able to see uh, a defense cannon and some armored vehicles. Yeah. We'll go there one day. I've been meaning to go there for quite some time, but never really had the time. I want to go there with my family. I'm just gonna try speed up a little bit. Yeah, so that's the Shokei One Wholesale Fish Market on Tunghe Road. And this is the HKSH Cancer Center. It's a new construction, it's a healthcare facility, private most likely. And this is a village. This used to extensively be a village, but you can see that how many villagers have now moved on and they probably sold their land or they returned the land to the government and the government sold it off to industry. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is the general state of affairs in Hong Kong. Uh, many village homes are being taken aback by the government, uh, which makes sense because you have to expand to some degree, right? You can't, you can't just, uh, uh, you can't just I guess uh, not monitor the land availability, especially in Hong Kong. It's quite a congested area. Land is at a premium. These are some shipbuilding areas. Shipyard, actually. This used to be the Shao Wan shipyard. It still is actually in operation to some degree. But again, shipbuilding industry is not really uh, a unique point in Hong Kong anymore. It used to be when the British were around now there's just no demand. Hong Kong is a financial center and a tourist attraction. So about to enter Shokei Wan. You see I'm already sweating. It's actually quite humid. I'm quite surprised. I guess the combination of overcast and the sun uh, it's not really that great. Many of these shops are closed since it is a Sunday morning. And that is actually the Aldridge Bay area. So we're actually very close to Shokei Wan. In fact, we may already be inside Shokei Wan. There's also a temple over here. I've been there before. Uh, but maybe not today. <laughs> Don't really have much time actually. So yeah, this is Shokei Wan. There's a wet market over here. And uh, it's essentially a residential area. It's not a commercial area per se. Although there are several shops around. So, just going to cross this road. You can see a lot of residential buildings are in this area. This whole area over there it used to be um, a typhoon shelter, but a couple of uh, decades ago now, um, they reclaimed this massive area and they built primary, secondary schools and a lot of government estates uh, and a nice little promenade. So this is uh, Shokei Wan. Shops are closed right now, which is great for us because that means less people. I'm just gonna cross over here, be, aware, uh, be mindful of cars and buses, etc. And there's a park over there. A nice park over there. I'm 
massive tree. Many banyan trees in Hong Kong. You know, governments really incorporated nature into their designs. There's a lot of respect for trees like this. So yeah, we're actually close close to the market now. There is a nice temple over there. You can have a look. Beautiful temple. Been inside before. Uh, it's got a lot of deities. Uh, most of these uh, these temples are devoted to Wang Tai Sin. Uh, this was a seafaring uh, kind of community. But have a look. You see how the trees are incorporated again. Yeah, this is actually a relatively old district in Hong Kong. There's a lot of recycling going on as well, which is great because recycling is, uh, you know, it's critical. You see the recycle bins and everything as well. You can see many uh, elderly people are pushing trolleys that contain cardboard, which they sell uh, according to the weight to various uh, recyclers. Yeah, in Hong Kong, the elderly are really hardworking. You can see, you won't see any beggars or you will hardly notice any. Many people are very hardworking, especially when it comes to the elderly. I guess it's just the culture and the mindset. And that's what drives the community. Also, the Hong Kong government really, really provides good welfare and good social security for its people, especially the elderly. It gives them good transport subsidies, uh, housing allowances, education allowances, uh, use of internet, many many facilities. So this is now Shoke Wan. You can see it's a residential area, and this is Shoke Wan, M Shoke Wan MTR station. I'm not sure what which exit it is. It says, oh, it's B1. So quite nice. A lot of buses as well. They extensively uh, provide access to far off places in Hong Kong. So we're now in Shokewan proper. Over there we have the markets and over here we have some uh, commercial areas and some residential areas and over there past the welcome shop we have a bus terminus and the bus terminus is actually very important because it allows uh, a lot of connectivity to remote parts of Hong Kong. Uh, this area is particularly important in Shokewan because it gives access to Chai Wan uh, and to Heng Fa Chun but it also gives access to southern parts of the island such as Stanley, Aberdeen, uh, Aplay Chow and all these other nice uh, areas that are generally uh, difficult to get to um, right now because MTR access is uh, limited in some degrees although the southern line has been developed for Aberdeen and uh, I guess uh, South Horizons and that kind of area so that's relatively good so you can see here a lot of activity so we'll be looking at the bus stops in a little bit more detail. So there are some nice minibuses here that take you to Sheko Beach if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, and this is the main bus depot. You can see actually there are a lot of buses here going to Meifu to, uh, Meifu to Shamshipo, uh, obviously um, to Central and uh, those kind of areas as well. Since many people uh, living in this area do work in other areas as well yeah. So a lot of buses many routes And that is actually one of the entrances to the wet market uh, We won't be going there Simply no time, but you know one day maybe I'll cover it So this bus goes to Kowloon City Yeah that one goes to Jordan. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful bus. See, see how they decorate these buses. You know, really nice. <laughs> nice rabbit. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of buses have a lot of advertisement on them. And these advertisements can be very colorful, really beautiful, very eye-catching. That's one of the beauties of Hong Kong. Most transportation, but most public transportation, uh, which is actually public transportation in Hong Kong is very extensive. 
uh, they have a lot of a um, lot of advertisements on them. It's a lot of money to be made, and obviously the infrastructure, the logistics infrastructure, also supports it. So everything goes hand in hand. So you can see, beautiful area. As I said, this area is actually quite an old part of Hong Kong, and because of that, uh, there are a lot of elderly in this area as well. So be mindful of that. Show respect, etc. Right. So again, this is probably the last wet, uh, fresh vegetable shop. Ah. Oh. I lost my dad. <laughs> What's he doing? Oh, I think he's buying some stuff. So, a lot of the elderly are also selling these uh, these, these uh, roots and herbs and stuff. Is she? She's selling mushrooms, coriander, mint, etc. Always try to buy local. Support the local businesses. Of course, there's no harm in helping those who seem to be in need. Okay? The elderly particularly, they work really hard, so you should as a community support them. So you can see a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, a lot of hustle and bustle, beautiful shops. that mangoes guavas tomatoes amazing yeah prices in Hong Kong have recently gone up um, it's the same in same as any other place in the world you know. so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this short one uh, there's a lot of walking involved but you know it was always fun it's always fun to come to Shao Kiwan so I'll just be going ahead, maybe get something to drink, maybe <laughs> wipe away my sweat. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, I'll try to make it uh, shorter in the editing process. So thanks. Peace out.